Hey, IoT Edge developers, we have Paul De Carlo today on the IoT Show, who's going to tell us everything about how you can leverage Azure DevOps and containerization of IoT Edge for you to be a super efficient and a high quality developer for IoT Edge devices. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier Host. Thanks for watching. Paul DiCarlo is here today to talk about DevOps for IoT Edge and counterization of IoT Edge in general, right? Yep. We're gonna so, Paul, that's your first time on the IoT Show, not the last. Can you give a short introduction about yourself and what you're doing? Sure. So, my name is Paul DiCarlo, and I'm a senior cloud advocate out of Houston, Texas. And I've been around doing things with IoT for quite a few years here for Microsoft, uh, six years with the company, and uh, really enjoying every day of it and always looking to, to see what kind of emerging cool stuff we can get our hands on and how we can always make it more awesome for yeah. developers out there. So something you've been toying with recently, and more than toying actually, being super serious about, is that you know, next step, you do proof of concept, you try out the tools, you do, you do play around, but then you have to go to production, right? You have to really turn into that mode of, I'm a developer, I need to leverage toolings and, and you know, infrastructure for me to implement CI, CD, to, to be more efficient in my work, but also to guarantee quality of what I'm delivering, right? Absolutely. So can you tell us a bit about, you know, how, how's it done on IoT Edge and when you're developing for IoT Edge devices? So it's interesting, a lot of this was kind of born out of uh, customer implementations that we had seen where, you know, the DevOps story of how do you actually get code down to the device, especially when you're talking like, could be thousands of devices in a yep. field. Um, how do you do that in a safe, secure way so that you know what's going down there is actually going to run on those devices? Because you don't want to get in a situation where yeah. everything's bonked out in the field. You know That would yep. just be a disaster. Um, so we've kind of looked into some ways. There's some tooling that has been brought out by some mm -hmm. of the teams in DevDiv that help with this. Mm -hmm. And also looking at some ways we can adopt some common strategies we see in other types of development to deployment for IoT Edge devices. Okay. So the way we're going to kind of start off with this, um, we actually have a GitHub repo for this project called IoT Edge DevOps. Okay. And what's really cool about this is it's a living repository that you can almost like take as is and import it from GitHub into an Azure DevOps pipeline. Okay. And you're going to get all these features that you're going to essentially see as we get in a little bit deeper into this demonstration. Okay. And because it's open sourcing and then adapted to your own Workflow, right? Of course, and that's the thing too. We're always looking for, you know, if there's other practices out there that we maybe have not identified, uh -huh. we'd love to have contributors come in and here and add on to that to make it better. Okay. So the first thing we'll look at, once you bring this into Azure DevOps, it almost looks exactly the same. You'll see I have myself this README. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do is kind of explain a little bit about how deployments work in the first place, okay. um, just to understand how we operationalize this in an Azure DevOps pipeline. So if you've ever used uh, Azure IoT Edge, you'll notice that you have your devices that you sort of register. Mm -hmm. And there's this concept of deployments. And yep. you can create these deployments. You can sort of publish them from the CLI. Or you can go ahead and you can even create them within the Azure portal yep. themselves. And what's nice is that you set this kind of target criteria. In our case, I'm looking at one where I have this uh, device twin tag for environment. And if it's mm -hmm. set to QA, the device gets that deployment. Yep. And if we look into that deployment, you can kind of see like what the modules are that are specified to run there. Yep. Now, for operationalizing this into, say, an Azure DevOps environment, we're going to open up the source code for an Edge solution, and you'll see here uh, the deployment template.json file. You've probably uh, seen this one. Uh, can, yeah, a few times. <laughs> and yeah, it's important because this really drives what eventually runs on those devices. Yep. And is that deployment, you can actually publish this from your machine into Azure, and you'll see it there and specifies everything. Okay. The important parts to know here is a couple things. Um, your registry credentials, so say you're using a private Docker registry or you're using, say, Azure Container Registry for yep. storing your images, well, you can go ahead and operationalize this with this special syntax here, this pound open bracket, and that's going to yep. go ahead and specify that I want to use a variable within my pipeline to facilitate that. Yep. Yep. We're going to leverage like a, a little plugin that's going to replace those tokens. Okay. And then we can kind of go further here. Um, you'll notice I'm setting up my modules here that actually get deployed. Yep. And one of these is one that we're building from source, so mm -hmm. the sample module AMD64. Okay. And what we want to do there is also change some things inside there so that when our CI CD pipeline picks this up, we want to make sure that we can go ahead and kind of operationally add in the ACR host that we want. Mm -hmm. And also we want to tag it with these built-in 
variables from Azure DevOps for the build definition and the build ID. So we know where they okay. came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we build this, they're going to automatically tag and we can always kind of go back to what actually created yeah. that deployment in the yeah, first and place. And you have a matching between the versioning that is actually on the, uh, the, the, the manifest and the one that you have in your DevOps. But exactly. Like for the code itself, right? And this is great too because like if you have an issue in like a previous you know module that you deployed, yep. you always know where you can go back to maybe find where it was introduced yep. and pull these things yep. back out. Cool. So it's going to come along with a CI pipeline, and mm -hmm. this thing's very basic. Um, and and this is good to kind of understand before we jump into a little yep. bit more of, of the difficult concepts here. So you'll notice that I look at this deployment template.json and module.json that we were just looking at. Yep. We're going to replace those with tokens. Mm -hmm. Replace those tokens with that special syntax. And those are all coming from variables that have been defined within my pipeline. Okay. It's very simple. Once we do that, we're going to use this off-the-shelf tool that came from DevDiv that allows you to have a task for building modules. Okay. And this is great. It's just like building them on your local machine, except it does it in Azure DevOps. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and publish uh, the artifact that's created from there, which is essentially those modified files that okay. create that that depl the ultimate deployment at the end of the day. Okay. And so if you're interested in those, that, that um, Azure IoT Edge for Azure Pipeline's uh, task okay. can be pulled down from the Visual Studio Marketplace. Okay. You bring that in and you can start building easy. Okay. But let's take it up a notch. You know, we want to, building is, is one thing. Now, yeah. how do we actually like release this and do this in a safe way where we know like we validated this deployment? Yeah. You're going to do batch there, validate it works, and then go big. Of right? course, yeah. yes. So the first step that I'm going to go ahead and look at here is this create deployment step. And so uh -huh. I'm going to go ahead and jump into edit release so we can sort of see uh, what defines these tasks here. And so you'll see um, it looks very similar to what we were just looking at mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with an added one that we're going to actually create the deployment. Okay. So this is using that same plugin, except there's now a new action that you can select here. Instead of building, we're going to now deploy this to edge, to devices. edge devices. And sense. of course, I've got this special target condition for tags on environment equals QA. We go to that, and that means that anything that has that particular device twin tag set mm -hmm. is going to get that deployment. Okay. Now, once we go back into here, we can go ahead and look at smoke testing this. So mm -hmm. maybe we want to make sure that this deployment actually takes hold on a device yeah. and really runs the modules that it's supposed to. And so the way we do this, we use a container, which is really cool. So we've actually containerized the edge runtime. Okay. And so this allows you to kind of have an ephemeral device that has no state on it, mm -hmm. which you can just spin up out of thin air yeah. on the build server. So we don't okay. have to spin up a VM or anything like that. Okay. And uh, what we then do is e execute a battery of smoke test scripts okay. against that. So this project, this, this device container, is also hosted on GitHub. It supports okay. X64, ARM32 devices, okay. uh, ARCH64 as well. And it's really mm -hmm. easy to use. And what's nice about this too, if you have like a deployment that does go bad and you want to go ahead and like figure out what happened, yeah. well, there's two ways to create one. You can take the existing connection strings to so say this smoke test device yep, fails. Yep, yep. I can just hop right in. I can go ahead and spin one of these up. Okay. I've got Docker PS, and you'll notice I've got an edge container. And then if I want to go ahead and like jump into, mm -hmm. uh, say this thing and see its state, we can see it's running. Mm -hmm. Then also I could like exec into this thing, and I can see. So it's just acting as re as a regular IoT edge device, right? Exactly. In, in your IoT hub that you can interact with. And just yep. give it a connection string, just in a few steps here, and you'll see mm -hmm. it actually has its own containers inside of it because it's using Docker in Docker. Yeah. So because I didn't, I, in this particular case, I didn't mount the Docker socket, so it actually has its own instance of Docker inside of it, which is really great for testing and make sure you're not polluting with perhaps something that might be on your dev machine. Yeah. Okay. And so we go through that. Our, our, our smoke test essentially consists of some scripts that basically go through and see, hey, I want to go ahead and look at all devices that have a particular tag. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go see if they have a deployment that's yep. targeted to that tag. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to go through each and every single module specified in there and wait until they successfully start. Okay. So this is pretty cool because like, you can go through here and if you're looking through the logs, you can start to see that as each one of those things lights up, sort of checks the box and you get yourself a nice little test. Okay. Now finally, because we've put this into a container, mm -hmm. it's sort of like the ticket to Kubernetes, right? If something's in a container, well, yep. then it can go in. And so what we've done here in that same project, it actually self-hosts a Helm chart mm -hmm. that will allow you to do scalable deployment of containerized edge devices. And what's nice here is they actually can self-register themselves. So while I showed you here we can use a connection string, there's also this way that we can self-provision them. And this, all it requires is up front, we sort of set up a 
service principle mm -hmm. within Azure. It allows us to broker access to create entities. Once we do that, I can go ahead and spin up inside this cluster, and these devices will register themselves without using an existing connection stream. They'll actually make a brand new one okay. uh, for themselves. And so what that looks like, um, it's pretty simple. Um, we go ahead and install Helm mm -hmm. into our cluster. We add the particular Helm chart here for the Azure IoT Edge device container, okay. and then we deploy that out. And so what that looks like, you'll see here I've got three devices that have been deployed. And if I wanted to perhaps do some sort of load testing or scalability, yep, yep. let's go ahead and make maybe, maybe not 999, because <laughs> it gives you that nice warning, but you could. That's the you thing, could. is that yeah. you could. It's like you're about to do something big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so what's really nice here too is like I can click into these and you know, as part of once I'm connected into my portal, I can exec into them, I can start to see exactly what the state is that's yeah. running on those devices, which gives you a nice ability if you think about it for like doing long running testing mm -hmm. um, or even integration testing against your third party services, perhaps. Yeah. So okay. um, okay. Finally, if you look in the deployment that we have specified in the, the actual project on GitHub, the, the IoT Edge DevOps project, we use this thing that I, I come across, it's called the uh, Docker App Insights. Mm -hmm. And it actually looks at the Docker um, transmit and receive, and, and it can also look at block IO that's happening. Okay. And so as you, you just deploy that in your cluster, and it'll look at that Docker host and it can sort of get those metrics. What's nice here is you can see I'm sort of tracking this. You can almost yep. tell when I began this deployment, right? Because mm -hmm. that's when the, the TXRX yep, starts yep. Going, going mad here. But what's really nice about this is you can start to look almost at health of your devices over time, mm -hmm. right? So if I want to maybe see does a module that I deployed actually live for three days, five days, or yep. a month? Easy. We can set our alerts. We can do all the nice stuff that we do in Application Insights and all that. So Love it. And so um, you can kind of see here that we've got ourselves a nice little end-to-end -end pipeline mm -hmm. where we can go through, we can not only build and sort of validate that we've got a good deployment, we can scale it out, and we can also have some sort of monitoring to test that it actually is sound over time. Actually, that's all of that is super impressive. <laughs> I'm just like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> So you basically have like this set of tools that are end to end. Hey, I'm tinkering. I'm starting like being more serious. I can now uh, integrate into DevOps. You actually don't have much to do because you just like clone that repo. It's in there. That's right. Uh, then you start working on your code. Um, goes directly into your DevOps pipeline. You can smoke test and integration test all of that thanks to these tools. Like I'm sure that setup is like what minutes, right, to, to go through. Um, actually, it can be, especially if you've gone through it once before, it totally yeah. can be. And that's the really nice thing. So as long as you visit this repo, yep. it's going to show you, like nothing that I showed here is extra. Um, everything that we talked about is contained in the uh, instructions here. So you can replicate this entire pipeline that we've shown. Awesome. And it's, it's pretty well detailed. Um, and if there are any issues, of course, you know, file an issue, we were yep. on GitHub, we're doing this all in the that's open. Awesome. And you know, the other thing is you can always just contact me on Twitter yep. um, if that's something that you'd also like to do. Definitely. Well. well, people will start following you. We're going to have also a link on the Channel 9 video here. Um, that's awesome, Paul. For people like me who are actually traditional like embedded developers, it's going to be very interesting. That's a very nice ramp up into Azure DevOps, actually. It's a very nice way to, you're, you're used to develop for devices. IoT Edge is a new paradigm, but still about devices and running things in there. But now you're actually offering us like a new realm, which is proper CI, CD in Azure DevOps with pipelines and so on. Um, and you know, test at scale and all these kind of things that you get for free or for free. Uh, you get on Azure DevOps. <laughs> well, that, that's, the, that's the idea, right? Is how many of us when we start these projects have the 1,000 Raspberry Pis or whatever it is that we're going to deploy to? Awesome. That's the beauty of, you know, yep. you, of containers it. and Kubernetes. Like, you guys have no excuses. Like, here's the, the repo for you to learn more at KLMS slash IoT Edge DevOps. And this is Paul DeCarlo. Thanks for watching the IoT show. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>